Welcome to Any Way You Slice It, where we talk about your identity and purpose in the kingdom of God. Come join author Ricardo Richardson as we slice our way to the core of God's Word to experience the beautiful and transformational discovery of who we are and why we exist, no matter how we slice it. Today's message is Bow to the King. Beloved family, our text says, Come, let's sing out loud to the Lord. Let's raise a joyful shout to the rock of our salvation. Let's come before him with thanks. Let's shout sounds of joy to him. The Lord is a great God and the great King over all other gods. The earth depths are in his hands. The mountain heights belong to him. The sea which he made is his along with the dry ground, which his own hands formed. Come, let's worship and bow down. Let's kneel before the Lord, our maker. Psalms 95, 1-6 King David understood royal protocol because he is a king. People from far away lands, when they come into his presence, they adhere to royal protocol and bow before him as a sign of respect. We don't bow in democracy, but we may stand. This too is protocol. When the judge walks into the courtroom, the bailiff may declare, All rise, please. Judge Dallas is presiding. And everyone in the courtroom rises out of respect for the presence of Judge Dallas. When the president or prime minister walks in the room, others may also stand instead of bowing. But in a kingdom, bowing is royal protocol, and one must only bow to the king. If you bow to anyone other than the king, he may take offense to it. And this goes for powerful lords that hold high rank in the kingdom. If someone bow and serve a lord over the king, both the lord and that person may be in contempt of the king's court and may suffer punishment by the king. Remember when John the Revelator was so overwhelmed, he bowed before the mighty angel that was showing him the revelation of Jesus Christ? But he said to me with strong emphasis, Don't do that, exclamation mark. I am a fellow servant with you and with your fellow prophets and with all who keep the words of this scroll. Worship God. What a strong rebuke. The angel is saying, wait a minute, you are not going to put me in contempt with my God and king, and neither do you want to be in contempt of the king. Maybe this is why Jesus is referred to as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So there is absolutely no mistake that he and his name is greater. Now we can also see why the Jewish leaders appealed to Caesar and said, you have to do something about this man named Jesus because he is declaring himself King. John 19, 15 records, but they shouted, take him away, take him away and crucify him. Shall I crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priest answered. Jesus always maintained that he was born king. He had a government on his shoulders that he brought to restore on earth. But his kingdom, he told Pilate, is not of this world. He says, if it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. John 18, 36. King Jesus is very clear that he rules a kingdom far greater than the kingdom of man and any earthly kingdom. When pressed by the Jewish leaders about paying taxes, he says, render to Caesar that which is Caesar's referring to the coin with Caesar's face on it. But render to God that which is God. In other words, whatever you see God's face on, give that to God. I can imagine how their mouths may drop to the floor. Because the last time I checked, God's fingerprint and face is on everything in the earth, including the people he created. Paul says this truth, that at the name of Jesus, everyone in heaven, on earth, and under the earth should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. 
to the glory of God the Father. Philippians 2, 10 to 11. This brings us to our opening text this morning. Creation worships, sings, and shall praises to God, for he is a great God and King. So one of the greatest kings tells us we too should bow and confess and worship him. Why is this so critically important? I'm glad you finally asked that question. See, if we don't bow to our king, we cannot confess and declare anything in the kingdom. Okay, let me put it another way. You feel sickness in your body or you have troubled circumstances in your life. Or maybe you are unable to provide the way that you want. Or there are toxic relationships even in your own home. The word of God says the prayer of the righteous is effective. The righteous simply means in right standing. Those who believe, serve, and bow to the king. Now get this, if we don't believe or have faith and bow to our king, then why must our circumstances, our crisis, our sickness, our issues bow? I want you to think about that for a moment and let that settle in this morning. If you don't bow, why should they bow? You do know that your body can hear, don't you? No, I'm not just talking about your ears. You can speak to other parts of your body just as you can speak to the issues and circumstances in your life. The Word of God says the flesh has a mind of its own just as the spirit has a mind. So if you don't bow to the king, then why should your flesh bow? Why should that foul spirit and attitude change or bow? When you won't even believe Bow or serve and surrender all. When we surrender and truly love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, body, and soul, then when rebellion or disobedience arises up in our lives, we can confess the truth and declare it over our lives. For death and life is truly in the power of the tongue. I worship you, Lord. I serve you, my God and King. And I bow my life to you. Much love.